you and I have the ability to move mountains, whether it's like I was this morning because I was up, um, I was, you know, really tired from doing a lot of things over the weekend. So, um, and then I woke up real early this morning uh, and, and couldn't go back to sleep because my mind was racing. Um, but, you know, when my wife was like, hey, well, do you feel like going to the park? And I went ahead and just said, yes, I, I want to go to the park because my new thing, my new saying is because I'm moving mountains, right? And so that's what I said to her. And she was like, oh, that's cool. Okay, let's make this happen. So I got up and didn't feel like it. Believe me, I didn't feel like it. But I got up out of bed and took my fat butt to the park. And once the sun started hitting me and and uh, just, you know, getting that, that fresh air in me, man, I just feel like a whole new person. I mean, the, the way I felt when I was in bed to the way I feel felt 30 minutes later, it's, it's quite amazing, right? So I would not have had that amazing feeling if I didn't get up and make that move, if I didn't get up and, and, and push forward. So um, one of the things that, that I'm, I'm noticing, and, and I want you guys to, to really understand what I'm trying to get across to you all, and that is that as we go through our daily life, the more yeses we give to ourselves, the more positive we give to ourselves during the course of the day, the more mountains or the more hurdles um, we go over without even realizing that we're going over them, right? So the the the, inco the inconsequential um, things that that we normally put um, or allow to become barriers in our existence, you know, become just what they are, inconsequential, meaning nothing to us in the real world, right? So, but we all, including myself, put up these 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 barriers to our achieving whatever it is that we're we're striving to achieve to whatever direction we're trying to uh, to go in and we literally have to start just giving ourselves more yeses so i was having this conversation i i um a client or a potential client actually um came out from texas and i met her and her mother uh, for lunch on Friday, and the deal was is that um, so she was out here, you know. So I drove a little while, they drove a little while. We met somewhat in the middle and and had lunch together. Um, talked a little business, but talked a little bit just about everything, you know. So she's going to spend money with me. I guess she just wanted to to meet me, which is not one of my norms. I don't really meet a lot of people, but. It was a good thing for me because I, I'm in the house a lot. So the the thing is is that I, by going out and meeting this young lady and her mother, enjoyed myself. But my first thought, honestly, was um, I don't feel like going. I don't feel like going. I don't feel like, um, you know, either she's going to do business with me or she's not. That was really my first thought. And so what I chose to do was was moving the positive, right? So moving in the positive is, I was like, well, what else am I doing today? I'm I'm doing some work on the computer. I'm doing, you know, some stuff on on a couple of our businesses. I'm uh, talking to clients on the phone. None of that would preclude me um, or stop me from going out and having lunch with this young lady. So I can tell you, after having a uh, a two-hour lunch, um, I actually had two and a half hours. You met in Riverside at 11 o'clock, had lunch and conversation, didn't leave there until 1.30. So the point is, is that because of that, I'm, I'm positioned now to make several thousand dollars um, off of this, you know, young lady by working with her. Not or there, I'm not going to say wouldn't have happened, but it would have been um, possibly uh, more difficult to get the money that I'm looking for, right, from working with her, from coaching her, 
you know, um, from her buying a $5,000 program. Um, it would be a little bit more difficult if I had not just went out and just had lunch and, and, and quite honestly enjoyed myself. You know, I really enjoyed myself. And so, you know, she's like, hey, Pascal, on Tuesday, um, when she gets back to, she'll be getting back to Texas today. Um, and then to uh, Tuesday, meaning tomorrow, she's going to give me a call and we're going to move forward. I mean, if I had allowed my my silliness my little, you know, roadblocks, um, my mountains, if you will, to stay there in front of me, then I would not have this greater potential because, you know, obviously the money is not mine until it's in my account, right? So, uh, but the the potential now of getting those thousands of dollars from her to me is is tenfold, right? It's it's it only because. I chose to get out of my own way. And I, I keep on saying this in this series of moving mountains, um, is that it is imperative, it is imperative that we get out of our own way. So, you know, these, this, this is so, it's just so ingrained in us. And it's, you know, there's, these setting up these roadblocks is ingrained in us because we've been told for so long that we, you know, you and I, um, oh, the world is hard. Things are difficult. You know, times are hard. Um, you know, pick it. I mean, we're, you know, we're, we're told when the economy is good, when the economy is bad. We're, we're told or trained, you know, how we should be thinking. Uh, we, are, we are trained and told, you know, um, when to go to bed, when to get up, what's good for you, what's not good for you, you know, all these different things. And, and what I'm learning, um, the more I listen to people that know far more than I do, far, I mean, just leaps and bounds, they're, they're, they're so far ahead of me, um, is that, you know, all of that stuff, all of it is just – bullshit that other people have put upon you, right? And you know within you, you have absolutely, and I keep on getting this over and over and over again, the more I read, the more I listen to people, over and over and over again, is that you have in you everything that you need right here, right now, to accomplish or do whatever it is that you so desire. And the deal is, is that you have to start getting out of your own way. You have to start creating this new you, this new persona. You have to start retraining yourself, redeveloping yourself, understanding that you have the potential to do whatever it is that you want to do. And so for me, part of expanding and becoming that person that I so desire to be means that I have to, once again, get out of my own way, right? Move that mountain. Get out of my own way. I have to start um, allowing myself to become that person that I choose to be or that I say that I want to be. And you, you, me, everybody else on the planet has that ability to do that. We all have that ability. And and one of the things that I, I keep on, um, you know, in my research is that it, it, it almost doesn't matter what your what your belief system is. It's it I mean, you could be Buddhist, you could be Christian, you could be um you could read the I Ching, you could be um um uh, pick one, I don't know. Um, Muslim, you could be whatever, you know, it doesn't matter because all of them in to some degree or another say very similar things, right? You know, they're, they're all ancient, um, very old, you know, for me, um, philosophies, right? So you, you know, for you, it's, it's your belief system. For me, it's a philosophy of living. And it's, it's just a, a way of living. And so one of the things for the people that, um, and you can find this, this verbiage 
across the board in some of the oldest religions, some of, you know, Zoroasterism, uh, pick a religion realistically, and you can find verbiage that's similar to what I'm about to give you. And so this is um, a verse, right? So this verse is from Psalms chapter 82, verse 6. And I want you guys to look this up because I don't ever want you to just take what I say and and just say, well, Pascal said it, so, you know, it's either true if you believe what I tell you or it's false. I want you to take what I say and then research it. And there's, there's a couple of reasons for doing that. When you do that, what happens is that it will, A, it will sink into your subconscious, right? It becomes a, a, a part of you more so than anything else you can do. Research and study becomes a part of you because that it, it goes into your subconscious mind. Um, when you just when you just hear stuff, um, if if there's no emotional attachment to it, then it probably won't become a part of you. It probably won't um, lock into your into your into your mind and, to, and become a part of you. So. I'm just going to run through this really, really, really quick, and this is just a fraction of it because I'm, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but what I'm telling you is you can find what I'm about to read to you in, in multiple religious beliefs, uh, the Torah, um, you know, the Old Testament, New Testament, different ver variations of it. And so this is from Psalms um, 82, verse 6, right? And so it says, I said, all of you are gods. All of you are children of the Most High. So key phrasing there, and they have it um, in quotation marks, right? And it, and, it, and it says, you are God, right? And so it's referring to you, it's referring to me. But what happens is I have found personally in, in belief systems, in religion, you know, what we are taught, um, is that it's it's never that stuff. It's never, you know, where the Bible, if you're a Christian, the Bible itself is, is you know, they, they when do they ever read that to you? And, you know, chapter and verse telling you that, and this is supposedly God talking, right? So I'm not a biblical scholar, but from what my research, from what I've heard from people who, you know, supposedly are, they're saying that in Psalms that's supposedly God talking, right? So and if so if if this is if if this is your belief system or if you just take it as a philosophy, as a thought process, I I do. And if if it is saying to you that God in your belief system, if you're a Christian, that God is saying that you are God child of the most high, right? So why don't we act in that manner? Why don't we believe? Because, you know, there are other verses in the Bible where it says that you can do as God does, right? Jesus says, Yahshua, you can call it whatever you want, you know, the, the proper is, is Yahushua or Yahshua, right? So, but people refer to him as Jesus. So, but it's, it, it's said that, that you can do you know, all things. You have the ability of miracles within you, right? So all these things that I do, I'm just paraphrasing, all these things that I do, you can do. You know, and it's it's important that whether you look at this as a philosophy, as I do, or you look at it as a as a belief system, um, regardless to what your belief system is, Hindu, um, you know, if you follow Krishna, whatever it is, it's important that you understand that the underlying theme, the underlying theme is that you have the ability to accomplish and do all things, right? You have the ability to, to, to go over whatever whatever mountain. I mean, you know, you all know, I mean, everyone has heard this one, you know, with the faith of the mustard seed. And I don't know if you guys have ever seen a mustard seed, but it's not much bigger than a pinhead, right? Um, it's a very small thing. 
And so it is it is said that with the faith of a mustard seed, you can move mountains. You know, and, and people, you know, we don't take these these um, these things that have been written, these, these ancient philosophies or thought processes or belief systems, whatever you want to refer to it as, as literal. We take them as, eh, that's just something somebody said a long time ago. You know, and, and, you know, just to let us know, you know, that um, there's something to this belief system that I have. But I, I, I'm telling you guys, that is the wrong attitude, right? Whether you look at it as a religious belief or you look at it as a philosophy, you have to understand that all of this has or is, is based in in some factual form because the the philosophy of the mind you know people read thinking go rich and um people read um what is this wallace wallaford which is re- actually re- you guys need to look it up it's it's old as dirt and written in the 1920s but a book by wallace wallaford and um you know it it all of it all of it deals with 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 the mind and what you can do with it. It deals with with the power of the mind. And all of it tells you that within a blink of an eye that you can change your position. You can you can literally think to yourself in the matter of a millisecond that I want to go to the left and then turn to the left and go that direction. Well, it is the exact same thing with every other aspect of our existence. Now, I'm not saying to you that you're going to be able to think and say, I want a million dollars or a billion dollars or a trillion dollars, and it's going to come to you in some blink of an eye or a matter of seconds or something of that nature. I'm not saying that at all. But what I am saying to you is that, when you change your thought, when you move in another direction, then that's when you start manifesting, right? So the, the mind process, and then subsequently creating the physical of whatever it is. And as long as you are moving in that direction and doing what's necessary, then you will eventually create that thing. As long as you have that 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 belief, and I, I believe this wholeheartedly. And the reason I do is because in my own existence, in my own life, my own world, you know, I'm constantly seeing, you know, and I don't always appreciate it. I'm going to tell you that's a, that is a true thing, which is a problem with me, is that I don't always appreciate, um, you know, what does come to me, right? It just, because it, it, it comes. And so therefore, you know, I'm not as thankful for it as I should be because I have positioned myself so that stuff comes. It it happens. And then, you know, in the beginning when you're developing whatever it is, you know, so when people let's say they start a business, um, let, let's call it a I don't know, you're a you're an accountant or, or what have you. Um you so you're doing taxes, you're starting off, you're struggling. You know, times are hard. It's time, uh, hard to get clients. And then over a period of time, you know, you've developed a healthy amount of clients. You've even gotten to the point where, you know, where you are living very well. And you have an abundance of business. You have an abundance of financial growth and reward, right? So what it tends to happen with us as human beings is that, you know, the struggle to get to that point was hard, was extremely hard. The struggle to get to that point took your concentration. It took your 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 emotional um everything, right? I mean you literally, you know, moments when you're when you're damn near um just broken down, stressed out, crying, um um just just you know you're at at your wit's end you know and then you're just like i'm not gonna give up i'm you know i'm gonna make this shit work this is the business i'm in i'm gonna make it work 
and then you get to the point where it's working, and then you get to the point where you're thriving. And the and the the thing is that when we get to the point where we're where it's working and beyond that, right, where it's actually thriving, we forget about the the struggle. And so we become comfortable and when we become comfortable, you know, we no longer respect the fact that we are where we are. We no longer are as grateful for being where we're at because it's just we just expect it to be. Does that make sense? You know, we expect it to be because that's where we're at. So, you know, before you had a job and it was a good job, I mean, I can't tell you how many people in my life and in, in, in my entire life that I've met, including myself. So I'm mean, me put me in this, where I have gotten a job, and before I got the job, I mean, man, I just like, oh, my God, if they just give me this job, you know, oh, I could do this, I could do that. I mean, it's just like in, in a state of, of desperation and panic for that job. And so ultimately, once I got the job, once I passed whatever probation period they had, once I got comfortable in that job, then I started, you know, talking shit about the job. Then I started like, these motherfuckers tell me one more time that X, Y, and Z, I'll walk up out of here. I don't know who they think they're talking to. If they this, if they that, you know, because I would lose my gratefulness for that position. I would lose my, my, you know, being thankful for the fact that that someone gave me a job when I needed it, when I desired it, and um, once I got it, then I, I started, you know, and once I got comfortable in it, then I started just kind of saying, eh, eh, right? And the, so the same thing happens, you know, whether you're working a job, whether you're, you know, whether you, you started a business and that business is, is subsequently generating you the amounts of money that that you want, you know, uh, to su- support yourself in the way you so desire. You know, we, all of us, unfortunately, become ungrateful, right, um, for that positioning. And, and so here's the whole thing. I'm going to kind of tie everything that I've been saying together. The deal is is that for us to grow, no matter where we're at, A, you have to be grateful constantly and continuously. I'm not saying that you have to stay where you're at. I'm not saying that you have to keep the job that you have. I'm not saying any of that. But what I am saying is that we have to learn to be grateful for what we have accomplished because that gratefulness and being in a state of grace every day and the state of being grateful every day for what we've what we've accomplished, whether it's getting a job that ultimately, you know, we don't like but we took it because, you know, we needed it. It's it's supporting us and so on and so forth. Or we built our business to a certain point and then we become somewhat ungrateful that, you know, we have it. It just becomes not even a thought any longer. It just becomes eh, you know, I, you know, this business does X for me. Well when you lose that gratefulness, you are sliding backwards and you're 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 actually positioning yourself for a fall. We have to stay in a state of grace and a state of gratefulness. Because when we stay in that state of great gratefulness, right, or state of grace, then what happens is we are constantly, while you're in that state of grace, we are constantly opening the door for greater things to come our way, right? We are constantly opening the door for bigger things to come to us. Whether it's it's in their job, it's going to be a promotion. If it's in your business, it's going to be more business. If it's in every aspect of our life, this thing this works. Being in a state of grace, in a state of gratefulness. If you go back to what I was saying in the very beginning, when I read to you, you know, Psalms, right? Um, the thing is, is that when you understand, and this is not me talking, this is your Bible, right? 
where it is saying that you are God, children of the Most High, that you have to be, in order to maintain that, you have to be in a state of grace. You have to be in a state of thankfulness, right? You, 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 you literally have to bless yourself, so to speak, and understand that your ability to do whatever it is that you so desire stems from that place from that place of grace, from that place of thankfulness. And part of this whole moving mountains thing that we've been talking about, this, this, this series that we started last week, Moving Mountains, part of it is the emotional attachment that we have to, that we have, to have in the process of moving and developing us, right? So if you're in a state of grace, in a state of gratefulness, you have to attach an emotional factor to it because other than that, it's just talk, right? So people people pray or they meditate um, or they have these, you know, these mantras and it doesn't mean a damn thing. You can mantra your ass off. You can pray your ass off. You can meditate your ass off. But if there is no emotional attachment and you're not connecting that to your higher power, to, to, to your, 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 your conscious and, and, and subconscious mind, it means absolutely nothing. Because people pray literally every day. You know, there's, there's probably you know, 50 billion prayers, you know, between prayers and, and meditations that are going, going out into the universe every day. And, and I believe in my, in my gut, in my heart, in my, in my soul, that the reason they don't mean shit and the reason that there are just so many of them that are just, you know, unfulfilled is because there's no sincerity to it. There's people, we do things just out of the fact that, you know, we've been trained to do them or we've been told that's the way to go, you know. The only time seeing things change is when, when you, A, if you have that moment of, of thought, you have that, you can call it a prayer, you can call it a, um, a, a meditation, but when you have that moment of thought and you have a deep attachment to that thought, and you're, I mean, you feel it in you, in your, in your gut, in your, in your heart, in your, in your brain, in your, in your, in your body, you're just like, oh my God, I just, you know, please, I just need to make whatever it is happen, happen. You know, I, I don't, I don't, I just need this to happen. I need X, Y, Z to occur. I just, whatever it is for you, right? That's when that's when you've connected to your to your subconscious, to your emotional, um, to your feeling, to your higher level. And when you've done that, that's when things seem to change. And that's the way it's been in my existence, right? And and, and quite honestly, I, I I've seen it over and over and over and over you know, over again since I was a child. Now, you know, I never really paid a lot of attention to it. Um, but the fact is that, um, you know, it's there. So since being a child, I've, I've noticed that people are able to connect People are able to change, make things happen when they have an